Hello and welcome to the Should You Buy for the Javelin. And uh, this has been a long time coming. This is the first new light mech we've had in the game for a very long time. I know a certain Reddit user that is leaping for joy that he now has a new light. And it's actually a pretty interesting one and has some really cool builds that I want to talk about. But we're going to go through the gamut on this thing. We're going to talk about its art, its stats, what weapons it can take, its spreadsheet warrior stuff, its possible hitboxes and hardpoint locations, and then sum it all up in whether or not you should buy the Javelin. But first, let's look at the art. We have the hero mech, the Hi There, which is literally its name. Hi There. It, this is the funnest hero name they've had so far. From my understanding, it actually is a legit name. It's in one of the TROs. That's cool. And I love like the, the skull on it and the sort of like green sort of virusy type camo on it. I love it. We have the special, which looks pretty interesting, kind of like uh, some sort of old uh, combat because you got all these spears on it, the javelins and these sort of insignia, kind of looks like an old timey sort of ancient war helmet. And then just the standard, of course. But going down here, this is not standard. This is not the standard way they do packages. These are cheaper. This is the first biggest thing about the Javelin. The standard pack is only $15 compared to 20. And the collector's pack is only 30 compared to 40. This is big. And they're doing the same thing here for the Hero and the reinforcement add-ons where they're only $10 instead of $15. I'm really happy they did this for the light. There was always going to be this, this problem is if they had lights and assaults and heavies all under the same power, like the same purchasing cost of a $20 package, a person would look at that and go, why would I ever buy a Javelin for $20? when I could buy a Kodiak for $20 and then I can sell one of the Kodiaks I don't like and buy javelins with it. You know what I mean? Like the the amount of in-game progression you got for your dollar was just so much better for buying the heavier mechs. So dropping this down slightly for the lights was a really good choice. The other way I would have gone like if you weren't going to drop the prices would be to add variants. So honestly, I was expecting this to be $20 and for us to have four variants or five variants. But this is a good way too. And it comes to the first real important thing about the pack for its value is $15 is basically the cost to purchase the month of premium time and some mech bays and your pre-order bonuses of some colors so realistically the mech is basically free because of those bonuses and because of that breakpoint for the cost really interesting i really love how they did it there but moving on we have uh, the 10n the 10f the 10p is the standard variants where the 10n is the special if you get the collector's pack for the hero we have the high there and the reinforcements, we have the 11A and the 11B. We'll go through that hero and reinforcements to say whether or not they're OP, it's pay to win comparatively to the standard package, if you need to get them or if you can pass on them. Moving down here, ultimate pack is appropriately costed for all the things. I would normally say they need a little bit of a reduction on here to get the ultimate pack, but having everything reduced reduces this significantly down from its previous standings. Early adopter rewards are kind of nice. You always nice to get some colors. These are ones that people probably don't already have. Like uh, these are like it's good when you get like a, a white and a and a black and those kind of things because those can be used anywhere. But these ones are a little more uh, sort of psychedelic, cool, a little more eh, interesting in that sense. So probably less people own them so you're more likely to get the value out of getting those colors and of course some sea bills is always nice so early adopter rewards are pretty good because of the colors we're moving down here into the mech specs the javelin is a 30 ton inner sphere light 
it has maximum engine rating of 285 for two variants here and the rest of them being 255. The majority of them can take jump jets except for the 11B, but the reason why the 11B can't take jump jets is it is ECM capable, so you have a little bit of a sneaky mech. Now let us pop over into the spreadsheet warrior because that is who I am. And we have uh, the Javelin set up here on the Battletech Theory Crafting page. Now, what I've done here is I've sort of theorized the different engine ratings that this thing could most likely take. We have the 200, the 225, the 255, the 280, and the 285. Now, there are ones, like the variants, that only max out the 255. However, there's those two that go up to 285, but I put in 280 because that was a break point where it increases your speed without increasing their, the tonnage investment. So more than likely you're not going to see 285s on these things if they tend to go to that level. You'll probably just see 280s. And then I included some lesser engine ratings because these mechs are primarily focused on missiles and it is a little difficult for an IS light to do missiles very correctly without some quantity of pod space because of the weight of IS missiles. So a 255 and a 200. If you wanted to lower your speed down a bit, you can see the speeds right here. You can take those to get a little bit extra pod space. And what we can see here is oh, all of them will have endo. It's probably the best way you can save some weight. And comparing the exact same engines versus with Pharaoh and without Pharaoh. Because sometimes you might need to take off Pharaoh because it takes up so many slots. You can see that with Pharaoh, you're only gonna have about 15 slots available to put all of your equipment in after your engine and upgrades are there. So it's a little tight, but I think I've managed to get every single design to be Endo and Pharaoh in my, my sheet here. But if you're going to go for more energy-based design, you might have to take off Pharaoh in order to get the, the, the space to put in double heat sinks. But, moving back there, we're going to head back to the Javelin and talk about its hard points and possible builds that I've come up with it. I've got a pair of pages right here, you can probably hear my, my paper moving around, that I've theory crafted on and I want to run through a few numbers here. First thing to look at is the fact that the majority of the hard points for the Javelin are in the side torsos. We hardly have anything in the right arm except for the 11A and the Hero, and nothing in the left arm except for the Hero. So what I've done is calculated out what all of the pod spaces would be with three different engines, the 225, the 255, and the 280 with armoring two arms, armoring one arm, and armoring zero arms, as well as how many slots are available. So for the 255, for two arms, one arm, zero arm, you're going from 11.64 tons to approximately 12 tons to 12 and a half tons, gaining basically a half a ton for every arm you strip off. The 255 would go from 10 tons to 10 and a half to 11, the 280 would go from 8.64 to 9 to 9.5. So, not much tonnage there. When you're putting those 280s and 255s on, majority of my missile based builds are with the 225, which requires an external heatsink, and I've compensated for that in all my calculations. And then my less, le little less missiles can do 255, and energy based stuff can do 255, 285. But let's go through the mechs here. We have the Javelin 10N with two missiles in each side torso with an AMS. Just four missiles in the side torsos, easy peasy, that's a nice. I had said in my recent 3060 tech video that I wanted a mech simply because we didn't have an IS missile boat. Here's my answer the day after. Ah, things are just... They become obsolete so quickly. The 10F, the next one over, has two energy instead of two missile, so four energy across the torsos. The 10P, which is the last one out of the reinforcement package, has three missiles in each side torso. 
with an AMS in the center. The 11A, which is the first one in the reinforcements, is two energy in the left torso, two energy in the right torso, and three energy in the right arm. The 11B, the last one in the reinforcements, has two missiles and an ECM in the left torso, and two missiles in the right torso, with an AMS in the center torso. It is basically like a 10N, but with ECM, so it's, that's nice. Uh, unfortunately, it does not have the ability to take jump jets, so you will not be able to get off the ground with this one, but you will have ECM to keep you hidden. And then the hero, the hi there, he has two energy in each arm, as well as one missile in each side torso. So a nice spread there can basically do both energy and missile combos, where everything else does one or the other. Alright, let's run through some builds. Starting off with the 10N. For this one, we're going to go and fill out those missile hardpoints. We have four missile hardpoints, so let's slap on four SRM-4s. We're wanting to emulate the Jenner Oxide on this mech. We're going to take four SRM-4s, we're going to have four tons of ammunition, a single jump jet, and a 225 rated engine. That's going to be pretty fun. You're going to be able to dash around, try to sneak into the back, and put those SRMs into an opponent's rear. A little bit slower, but you're going to move around what an Arctic Cheetah moves. So, just like, I think nine kilometers slower than an Arctic Cheetah. Not that bad. You're going to be able to keep up, and that is a good strike. Maybe a tiny bit light on ammo. I'd like to take five tons if that is my only weaponry. But still, it's 800 potential damage, and it should do okay. Next up is four Streak 2s, in case you want to get in there and be a light hunter. Four Streak 2s, a Beagle Active Probe to stop a pesky enemy ECM, a single jump jet, four and a half tons of ammo, and a 225. Four and a half tons, that's a little bit better, a little bit more uh, cushion there for you to not run out during a battle. But also, it's SRM-2s. They shouldn't use it as quickly, and also that, if you plan it correctly, all of that damage should be going to your opponents. You shouldn't have any lost or misplaced alpha strikes. So, I think that design would also work out quite nicely. Moving on to the Javelin 10F. With those two energy in your side torso, we can do four medium lasers. 2 XL 285, we just maxed out the engine, we got 13 double heat sinks. We have some jump jets in there, I believe. But the thing is, is I couldn't actually get that design to fully utilize its weight. It runs out of slots before it does. So it had like a half a ton floating or something like that without any slots. It was really annoying. So instead of four medium lasers, what will most likely happen is four medium pulse. Four medium pulse lasers with an XL-255, 12 double heat sinks, and two jump jets. I think that's going to work out quite nicely. They're most likely going to be mounted fairly high on the, the, the side torsos. The two jump jets will give you enough jump to do certain situations. Probably not things like on River City going from the water to the Citadel platform, but you don't really need to do that. You're going to have enough speed with the 255 to get out of dodge if you need to. And 4 medium pulse, 12 DHS, will be manageable heat. Moving on to the 10P, we have the 6 missiles. This will be great. We have 6 SRM-2s. Oh, well, think of the DPS on that. 2 jump jets and an XL-255 gives you 4 tons of ammo. Now, maybe it's a little light on ammo for six serm twos so you can drop it down to a 225 and get five tons of ammo it just depends on whether you have that little bit more speed and a little bit less ammo or you want the little bit less speed but a little bit more ammo for that better uh, battle, uh, battle longevity and for the javelin 11a it has these energy hard points it has the right arm in the side torsos, it needs to use all of them, right? We want to pad that thing out with weaponry. Now, it could do the builds that the 10F could do with the medium lasers and um, 
four medium pulse, maybe you could do five medium lasers, something along that. That, that would work. But you could also do things like ten, uh, not ten small lasers, seven small lasers, two jump jets, an XL280 with 14 double heat sinks, or you probably could fit on seven small pulse, although I think it would be too hot. Things like six small pulse with a jump jet and an XL280. But yeah, moving on to the 11B here. It has the missiles and the ECM. Now, what you could basically do, if you wanted to, is you could copy from the 10N the streak missile design with four SSRM-2s and change out the Beagle Active Probe for the ECM. Straight one-to-one -one conversion, four and a half tons of ammo, no jump jets, so actually five tons of ammo because you can t take that half ton jump jet and put it into your ammo and it would be uh, a light hunter in that sense you could hide get around the back and do that uh, light hunting thing or you can use that ECM to go on a more of assassination missions you could fit it in with like a 225 and four SRM fours uh, it would be a little bit less on ammo because you have to somehow figure out to fit in that one and a half tons of ECM. So while you could probably save a half or one ton from stripping one or two jump jets from your previous designs, you're gonna have to dip in a half a ton or a ton into your ammunition in order to get that ECM on there, which is really unfortunate. So if you're trying to do things like the four serm four design, you're gonna have really light ammo on there. So be, be cautious of that. You could alternatively do things like two serm sixes with Artemis or something like that, or three serm fours could just cut out a serm four for some ammunition. Those would work as well. And we have finally the hero, the high there, with two energy in each arm and a missile in each side torso. Now this one is the truly unique one with the ability to do those mixed designs. We could do things like four small pulse lasers, two in each arm, and two CERM 4s, a jump jet, three tons of ammo, and an XL-225. Or four small lasers, two CERM 4s, two jump jets, three tons of ammo, and an XL-255. I think it's... All of these mechs are quite good. In terms of whether or not it's, you know, overpowered or anything on each side, it would be nice if, say, I don't know, the 10F or something like that had ECM so that there was something in the base package of that ECM. As of right now, just the reinforcements have ECM. But overall, they all have some pretty devastating builds. They're, they're going to be really good short-range missile, energy, light mechs. They're going to be able to dash around. I think it's good. Let's pop up to the top and look at the art here and think about where these hitboxes and hardpoints are. So this mech will be 30 tons. So it is Articheta and Spider weight. And looking at its design here, it's very humanoid. It's very tall and lanky. So while the mech may be tall, I foresee it having very tall vertical hitboxes allowing it to spread damage between its sides and its center very effectively. I see this thing as being pretty tanky. I see this thing as like, art, well, not Articheta level tankiness because that has a clan XL engine, but this should be along the lines of Articheta. Articheta before a side torso pops sort of feeling. It should be pretty hard to kill. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the hard points look like they're mounted high up. You can see the missiles right here near the top of the chest. The cockpit is right at the top, so you do not have to poke out very far in order to get a look over a hill and see if you want to continue further. And then you just have to expose that tiny bit of your upper chest in order to get the weapons downrange. And most likely those missile hardpoints will be exactly where the energy hardpoints will be on the other designs. But yeah. I think overall this mech is going to be very good. For its price and what it does, I think it's a good purchase. If you like IS lights, you're going to absolutely love it. If you're on the fence about being a light pilot, 
I would say try it because the price is so good. It's like you're just buying a month of premium anyway. So just might as well get some free javelins while you're doing it. Also, as one final note here, the release date for this should be May, June area. That is right around the corner from the new tech. So this thing will be sort of a month before new tech. We'll have all the details. You could, like there could be things like streak sixes and like ER medium lasers and stuff like that that will make this mech even better. So I, I think it's worth the investment. Pick up the Javelin. But that'll be it for me today. Thanks for watching and good hunting.